Okay, welcome everybody to the Constructing and Innovate webinar series on uh, modern methods of construction. Uh, my name is Jamie Goggins. I'm director of uh, Construct Innovate. Construct Innovate being Ireland's national research centre for construction technology and innovation. Um, the topic for this week is from the perspective of reinforced concrete MMC manufacturers. Um, we're delighted to have um, three speakers across different areas in there. So our first speaker uh, is uh, Yandre Wish, uh, Wish Station, uh, who's a materials engineer from HTL. Um, and they are, have a 3D concrete printer in Ireland um, and are printing, demonstrating buildings at the moment in it. So he's going to talk about how this technology can help uh, solve the housing crisis in Ireland or tell us if it can or cannot. Uh, we have Paulie O'Connor, who's a civil and structural engineer in Thermo House, uh, and they um, supply uh, inside a concrete formwork for housing delivery and also deliver housing themselves uh, using their own technology. Uh, and then we have Tony Woods, who's the CEO of Midland Steel Reinforcement, um, and they have a product called Faster Fix um, Modular Rebar, and he's going to talk about the benefits of assembling reinforced steel uh, products for concrete structures under factory controlled uh, conditions and the benefit from those so as per other weeks, um, please do um, engage. Please do add your questions to the Q&A um, box. So you will see the Q&A box at the very bottom. So don't use the chat function, but use the Q&A and post questions to the speakers. Um, you can post questions to the speakers during the presentations, but we will uh, deal with all the questions at the end after all three presenters have uh, presented uh, in there. So just um, I suppose without further ado, I'm going to um, kick off by asking uh, Andre to start his presentation. Over to you, Andre. Thanks all very much, Jamie. Uh, so, hi guys, how's it going? Um, my name is Andre. I'm a materials engineer at HTL, and we focus on 3D construction printing and how we can apply it to solve the housing crisis or promote housing delivery within Ireland. So who are we? So HDL is a 3D construction printing service provider and equipment distributor within Ireland and the northern part of the UK. And we aim to deliver cost efficient, high quality and sustainable buildings through our 3D construction printing technology. And we do this by increasing productivity, quality and value by leveraging new technology and improving the sustainability of buildings. So our current market, market position at HTL is we bridge the gap between 3D construction printing manufacturers and building contractors. And we do this by um, distributing technology um, in terms of equipment, 3D printers, as well as delivery of projects and code compliant designs and construction details. Further than that, we also provide training on the technology so if you're looking to upskill and learn more about the 3D printing or additive manufacturing technology, um, we provide training courses on that. Um, and as we do R&D as well at our R&D facility up in Drohara. So uh, we classify as additive manufacturing um, according to the Department of Housing's seven categories of MMC. And then we fall under category four of MMC. Um, so whereas most MMC manufacturers um, supply and manufacture their products off-site and then bring it to site to assemble. We bring the technology and a digital model directly to site and they therefore construct the digital model directly on site. Um, with that, the, um, constructing the digital model, model directly on site, we are extremely accurate and to yield the accuracy, we work with about a five mil tolerance from span to span. Um, to yield the accuracy of the technology, we encourage any MMC manufacturer to collaborate with us. Um, we essentially streamline the production of housing through this accuracy by pre-ordering prefabricated components. So for example, light gauge steel partitions um, or roofs, we can work seamlessly with prefabricated components and accelerate the delivery of housing and spend less time on site essentially. And with that shorter construction timelines, we can essentially increase um, the housing delivery. So the current problem we're facing is um, we have the same sort of supply at the moment with ever increasing demand. 
and an ever decreasing skilled labor force. And what all of this leads to is reduced productivity, uncertainty within the delivery market, less value being provided and a supply gap, which is then where we come in. Um, and the solution we see uh, is we have, uh, we collaborated with Roadstone on a demonstration building we did at our R&D facility up in Drawada, um, where we constructed a, a demonstration building um, and partnered with Roadstone to develop a 3D printable ready mix concrete material. Um, we went with ready mix concrete as it is a industry standard and everyone in the industry is already familiar with the material. So there's nothing new there. Uh, it's something the industry is already familiar with. Um, and as you saw there, the ready mix concrete truck arrives on site, pulls up to our pump. We firstly check the consistency of the material. If we're happy to, to go with the material for the day, um, and then deposit the material into our pump. Um, from there, it is pumped to our printhead, which then places the material in a layer by layer manner, according to the digital model again. And then there you see, we work with prefabricated components. There we use prefabricated light cage steel floor cassettes and partitions, as well as timber roof trusses. All of them have been ordered months in advance and just brought to site and it fits um, without any site measurements. Um, because it's concrete, we, are, we deliver far in excess of 100 years design life. And on the external, um, as you can see, the internals are finished off as traditional houses. If you step into the inside of the house, you wouldn't know that it's a different um, or a modern method of construction. Uh, and then on the outside, we apply a one coat color render, again, looking similar to what traditional houses look like. And then at the end there, you'll see all of our delivery partners for the project um, that worked with us. So then why use additive construction? So with the ever increasing demand for housing and sort of labor being non-existent at the moment, we, we tend to, or we aim to streamline the supply of housing. And we do this by increasing the construction speed so we're about 145% more efficient than traditional methodologies at the moment. Um, so with this increased speed, we can accelerate the delivery of housing. And we do this by lever leveraging technology, ensuring quality and accuracy whilst reducing labor and decreasing costs. So by leveraging technology, we can integrate um, our BIM model directly to sites. Again, for, for very accurate and quality quality um, structures to be implemented. We work with around a five mole tolerance. Again, we can pre-order most of our components without any site measurements, and we know that they will fit. And we work with a material that is five times stronger than traditional block that it's replacing. So we work on around um, a 24 hour strength. We have the same capacity of what a 28 day strength block would have. And that allows us to place our floors and continue printing on the following day. Um, we produce labor. We work with around four to five operators. And all of these combined decrease the cost because you spend less time on site due to the speed of construction. You reduce your interest in prelims, as well as the reduced labor leads to an overall cost saving per unit. So just an overview of how the process works. You start off with your design on any CAD software. And um, after the design has been accepted by all the relevant stakeholders, you, you export it into a slicer software. What the slicer software does is it slices your building up into, into layers, essentially. Um, and then that sends code to the printer, the operating system of the printer, which gives it coordinates to follow. Um, as it follows the coordinates, it places the, the structure layer by layer which then builds up the structure um, with extremely accurate deposition of material in a layer-wise fashion. And then if we look at the materials that we use, according to EN206, um, your material should meet specification, production and performance. And then in terms of specification, um, we collectively with Roadstone develop a um, printable ready mix concrete material, which was the first ready mix con printable concrete in the world. Um, most of the other 3D printing manufacturers and projects that goes on around the world currently being printed with mortar, um, which is your cement, your concrete without large aggregates. 
and we went with um, ready mix concrete, which reduces our carbon embodiment of our material by up to between 40 and 50 percent. And it is more familiar to the wider construction industry, which then um, facilitates or accelerates um, uptake of the technology. So then our material consists out of 99 percent locally sourced materials, which consists of your typical cement, aggregates, and water. And then we use 1% of admixtures, which basically enables our material to behave in the way we need it to behave. And those admixtures consist of a retarder, um, which is put into the ready mix concrete truck. And that is to avoid the material from setting within the truck. We then use plasticizers to help us pump the material to our printhead, as well as an accelerator and stiffener we dose um, at the printhead. And that allows the material to set fast enough and to hold its shape whilst being extruded. Uh, in terms of production, um, because it's manufactured and produ produced at a concrete um, production plant, it has factory production control. So the material arrives conforming um, to EN36 on site. And then finally, when we look at the performance, we look at fresh and hardened state properties. And essentially what we had to prove here is to show that our fresh and hardened state properties after the printing process isn't affected. So we tested before printing and after printing, um, but both fresh and hardened properties, and we can confirm that the printing process doesn't affect, uh, adversely affect the properties, and all of the performance requirements of our material were far, far in excess of the specification of the material. We then look at the regulations that we follow. Any 3D printed building designed for us, it complies with building regulations, part A to M. Um, the loads that we have on the buildings, we get from classic Gira code one. So there's nothing new again. And in terms of the material standard, as we said, it complies with EN206, as well as all of the individual constituents and components of the material um, applies, complies with the relevant standards. If we then look at the design standards, you can design either according to Eurocode 2, which is your reinforced concrete design, or Eurocode 6, which is your masonry design. And we opted to go for Eurocode 6 because that allows us to place all of the load on our, on our printed walls instead of relying on rebar to take or carry the load. So we have no rebar in our, in our structure and it's fully, the load is fully taken up by our printed walls. And then in terms of execution, we follow the rele relevant execution of structures and workmanship on construction site standards. And then there's a new standard released early in the year um, by ISO ASTM, which was adopted and accepted by NSI. And this is a new additive manufacturing for construction standards, which um, looks at the quality assurance and qualification principles of any structural or infrastructure element that is fabricated with additive manufacturing. And then if we look there at the typical design of a 3D printed house or building with the Eurocode 6 analogy, you start off with a typical strip foundation. So again, standard industry practice. Um, after your strip foundation, you do your, your fill and you, we do a either in an in situ insulated concrete slab, or we can do a prefabricated concrete slab. Um, the in situ slab would definitely be slower. Um, so we're working on working with partners Cray. They have prefabricated insulated slabs, and we are going to implement that in our ongoing projects from now on, um, which decreases your time on site again and leads to more efficient delivery of housing. Um, so we then have a cavity wall construction, which consists of 200 mil wide 3D printed walls. And in between, we do a full fill of A2 fire rated insulation, which is pumped in afterwards. Um, and then on the internals, we have a chip lining frame system. Um, we, and then we use light gauge steel floor joists and stud partitions, which are all prefabricated. Um, passive sills, triple glazed windows, and thermally broken steel lintels. You can also do a regular precast concrete lintel. And then we use a prefabricated truss roof as well. And then this is just to show the new detail, which is which uses the prefabricated um, slabbing system. 
Um, this can be done in two variations. It can either be done on a strip pudding or a pile foundation, which uh, obviously depends on your ground conditions. Um, and then if we just look at it, the sequence of it, so you'd start off um, either printing your rising walls or using the precast um, slabbing system. We then print in three phases per story. So we would go from your, your ground level to your sills, from your sills to your lintels, and then your lintels to your wall plate. After your wall plate, you would place your prefabricated um, floor cassettes or um, your joists, as well as your internal partitions. From there on, you would uh, again print from your floor plate to your sill, your sill to your lintel, your lintel to your eaves. Um, put up your prefabricated truss roof, apply a color render, install windows, and complete the rest of the finishings of the house. And then if we look at a current project, we have lined up to start in the second quarter of the year, which is a social housing um, project for one of the county councils. Um, this is a terrace of three that we plan to do at over three units, total footage of 300 square meters. Um, and in this, the total time that the printer spends on site is 15 days. So within this 15 days, we only spend five days of actually printing the superstructure. The rest of it consists of setting up your printer, installing your um, joists and your floors, as well as scaffold risers, and then taking down the printer at the end of the superstructure. So then in total, from start to finish of the program, um, you're looking at six months, so that's from when you arrive on site and until you hand over the keys to the new owner. And then if you look at sort of, we phase it into five different phases. So we start off printing the rising wall up onto our DPC level. The DPC level goes then up to your lintel level. From your lintels, you go to your wall plate where after you would take three days to assemble your, your floor and your joists. After that, you carry on from your floor plate to your first story lentils, and then carry on until ease. So a total of five days of printing for, for the superstructure. Then if we look at another application, is a high density um, housing application. And this is a, in Sligo, which would be a 21 units over 1,500 square meter footage. It has a total print time of 162 days. Again, that includes for your printer setup and taking down, installing your floors and scaffolders. And the total construction duration for this would be 20 months. Another application we see as well is for student accommodation. And this is a scheme done or planned for 48 apartments over eight blocks. Uh, it has a capacity of 168 students. And the print time per block would be 27 days or 216 days in total for the entire scheme. That again includes all of your prefabricated LGS partitions and floors, as well as all the other components, as I mentioned with the printer. And this is just an internal view of what it would look like. So it's three, 48 apartments over eight blocks over three stories. Um, and that's it, thanks very much. Welcome, any questions at the end? Brilliant. Thanks, Andrea. Great to see um, the actual 3D printer in action there, and that it's this was you know it's been talked about for a while, but actually actually have printed a 3D building in Ireland uh, using it as well. So there's lots of questions coming in uh, on that, so we, we'll get to those at the very end. Um, so just conscious of time, we're going to move on to our next presentation. The next presentation is by Paulie O'Connor from Thermo House, and he's going to talk about the insulated concrete formwork uh, technology that they use for housing delivery. So over to you, Paulie. Hi, um, so my name is Paulie O'Connor. I'm an engineer with uh, Thermal House based here in Clarence. I'd so just like to thank Jamie for giving me the opportunity to showcase Thermal House and what we do to you today. So basically, we are building materials manufacturer, supplier, and installer. So we have four main products that we manufacture here in Clarence. We have um, we have an underfloor thermal board uh, insulation. We have the insulated concrete formwork, the ICF blockwork. We have a thermal floor panel, which is a suspended uh, concrete floor panel. 
and we have a Tomo Roof panel. So we deliver throughout Ireland and the UK. So our main the factory and our office here in Clarny, but we also have an office in Slough in London. Um, we offer a supply only and we offer a supply and install package. So currently we have three construction teams based in Limerick and we have another construction team out in our site in Milltown in Terry. So typical process of any project would be that we get planning drawings, architectural drawings from, it could be like a one-off client or a developer. So what we do inside here in the office is we do a high level structural map up on that based on whichever scope. So it could be walls only, floor, roof only, or a combination of the three. So we do a markup, give it to the quantity surveyors, and then they send out a price and it would develop from there. So our marketing team have a fairly good video there, which I'm just going to play for you now, which kind of gives you uh, an idea of each of the four products. And then we can kind of go into a bit more in depth on some projects after that. So um, you might let me know if there's any issue with the sound, but hopefully it's OK. OK. Thermo House. At Thermo House, we manufacture, supply and install a complete low energy building system comprising of interlocking walls, floor and roof modules. Our building system is produced in our Irish manufacturing facility in Killarney, County Kerry. The manufacturing process begins with Neopore polystyrene bead. Using steam, the EPS bead is expanded to 10 times its original size. This highly insulated material is injected into a mould to create the block form. These lightweight system components arrive on site ready for rapid assembly. Thermo wall blocks are assembled in staggered courses, and due to their interlocking surfaces, this can be done quickly and easily. Steel rebar is placed into the wall cavity and then filled with concrete. Render can be applied directly to the ICF surface. Also, a variety of finishes such as brick, brick slip or timber products can be used. To eliminate cold bridging, our end and reveal blocks are used to form insulated openings for windows and doors. The floor panels, which can span up to 8 metres, can be manually placed in position. The floor panels have tongue and groove interlocking joints along their edges, enabling rapid installation. Next, steel reinforcement is placed and concrete is then poured on top, completing the floor structure. The roof panel design enables rapid installation. Thermo roof panels can accommodate any roof design and can support the integration of solar panels. The thermo board insulated panels are rapidly installed and designed with underfloor heating in mind. The Thermo House system can be used to deliver any building design, whether contemporary or traditional. The Thermo House ICF system is certified for use in up to six storeys in house. Our walls and roofs can incorporate any style or finish desired. The Thermo House building system gives you a solid, reinforced concrete building, which achieves exceptional air tightness and low U values whilst being up to 60% faster to build than traditional methods. Contact us today if you want to build one of Ireland's best future. Okay, so that just gives you a brief overview there. So what I'll do is I uh, will just speak about the insulated concrete formwork first, the ICF. So we have um, we have different types of blocks. We have two internal load bearing blocks. One is the party wall block, which has a 200 concrete core with uh, 50 mil insulation either side. So that's for compartmental walls. Um, we have an internal load bearing wall, which has a 50, 150 mil concrete core with 50 mil insulation either side. And then moving out to the out external wall block, we have a basement block, which um, has a 200 concrete core, which is sufficient for a lot of basements, predominantly more so in the UK, we use this block. Um, 
the standard external wall block that's shown there, that's being superseded by the passive gold wall block now, which is a 0.15 U value. Since the, the introduction of the NZ uh, regulations, which uh, has a minimum U value of 0.18 for your external wall. So uh, that's the standard current one in Ireland. And then we have a passive platinum wall block, which gives you a 0.1 a one new value, it's a 450 white block with uh, 250 mil of external insulation. So blocks, this is this is a development there that I just took pictures from in uh, on Blood Mill Road in Limerick that we're doing. So we're a subcontractor here on this one, um, this is all completed and handed over. So this was a walls only project. So typically we um, you build a story at a time. So it's they had timber floor and um, timber floors in this and um, positive joist. So what we do is we start off, you do your dead work, you pour up your DPC level, then you come back um, and we do to just above positive joist level. And uh, you could leave concrete pockets on the inside of the walls for that. And they both on a timber ledger and picture of positive joist for that. And then we continue up to wall plate and then to gables. So you have four pores usually on a house like that. Um, another development in Castle Troy in Limerick, it's a four-story apartment block. There was actually, to the right of that photo, there's an identical apartment block, the same, same footprint. So we completed that. That was uh, walls and uh, floors for that. And we used our concrete floor panel on the flat roof of that as well. Um, so just moving on to our floor panel. So we offer um, two different types. There's a 160 and a 210 floor panel, depending on the span. And you can generally span up to about six meters in that. Um, these are non-low bearing shuttering kit, basically. So these are propped with acros. And um, you pour concrete three, which kind of gives you an end result of a structural waffle slab TV arrangement. So in theory, you could remove these panels after the concrete has reached design strength, but they obviously offer as well uh, good insulation and acoustic properties between the floors. And this is uh, one of the floors there in the apartment block I showed you there in Limerick. So you can see the panels are laid out on the left hand side. Um, you have reinforced steel cages placed at the joint from bearing to bearing. Then you have your plumbing works that will go into the screed and we lay a mesh then on top of that. And then finally you pour your concrete and then you move on to your walls then after that. I suppose one of the benefits we find and developers find with our floor pan is that you pour your ICF wall and the next day you're setting up your floor panel. Whereas if you're doing precast or something like that, um, you have to wait for the walls to get to the design strength before you put that on. So there's a speed benefit there in that. Um, you usually use 35 Newton 10 mil aggregate, and in our walls, it's typically 25 Newton 10 mil aggregate, but it all depends on the design and the engineer on the project. Um, then we have a thermal roof panel, which is a simply supported uh, insulated panel, which has two. Uh, structural steel sections within the panel. Each panel is 510 mil wide and you have a tongue and groove, so they basically flat into each other. You get a good air tightness out of that. You don't need any airtight membrane or anything under that. So we find that a very popular product and especially when you're doing, um, these are just an example of it. There's a house there in the UK, it's a fairly complex roof, and then you have a, a curved uh, roof detail. Um, we find it, it it's very good as well if you're if you've a dorm or construction that you don't have truss roof arrangement and you keep a lot of space underneath the roof panel. Um, this is our underfloor insulation board. So I suppose what makes it different to other insulated boards is that it interlocks between each other and you have a mushroom cap arrangement. So you can clip down your um, underfloor. You can pipe work into it stops it lifting during the pour and the interlock between the insulation, between the boards, stops concrete getting under and possibility of lifting during the pour as well. Yeah. So back in 
2020, back in 2019, sorry, um, we started our kind of flagship development. We did a turnkey project under our parent company, MC Group, Mike Cronin. My uh, MC Group is um, does ready mix, concrete blocks, quarrying, tarmac Adam. So we decided to go in on a turnkey project for fluid housing in Killarney. Um, where we delivered 65 houses and 19 apartments. The houses are a mixture of two, three, and four bedroom, or two, three, and four house terrace, um, terrace housing. And the ICF, so we had underfloor heating board, ICF walls, thermal floor, and thermal roof. And uh, the total, I call it ICF there, but it's, it's a thermal house build program with 12 months on that. Um, then we've moved on to our second one, our second major development with fluid housing, and that's in Milltown and Kerry. And we handed over 54 uh, semi D houses, uh, again, ICF slash Tomo House Build Program of that of 16 months. And we're on to phase two of that. Development in Milton again for Clude, so it's 16 assisted living bungalows and they're a three story apartment block. So in total, you have 44 um, units there. So I suppose really since we've developed, I think the introduction of NZ and since we did our development in the reading Clarny for Clude, kind of really kicked us on from being more of a, a one off housing into more development space. And these are these are just developments that we were kind of involved as a, an installer or turnkey contractor, but we're, we're supplying uh, materials to developers, which I kind of haven't gone through here. Um, so I suppose in the last three years, kind of between Limerick, um, Kildare and Dublin, as an installer, Tom has been a subcontractor on a total of 250 housing units. And then on our own development, then with MC Group, we've uh, in the last three years, three or four years, we've been involved in 187 units handed over as per key for fluid. So, um, yeah, look, that's a, that's a brief overview of us. And um, I'll hand you back to Jamie there, and I'd be happy to answer any questions um, at the end. So, thank you. Great, Paulie. Thanks a lot. Um, again, yeah, keep the questions coming in into the Q and A, uh, and we'll answer. We'll deal with those afterwards uh, in there. So that's a, an impressive number of houses to be delivered in the country. Um, so I'm sure there's lots of lessons that the guys in Thermal House have, have learned over the years um, from delivering. Uh, housing through different methods, either directly through a turnkey solution, but also as a subcontractor uh, as well. So um, we move on to our third speaker, uh, who's Tony Woods, uh, who's the CEO of uh, Midland Steel Reinforcement, and he's going to talk about uh, MMC in Reinforcement Solutions. So over to you, Tony. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks for the opportunity to, to speak here today to all the speakers. Um, just a little bit about us. As a company, we are based in Mount Melick, and the services I'm going to show you that we're providing are based in all these five locations. We're in the UK and we're in Norway as well with a product called Faster Fix. Our vision and values are there purposely to bring, uh, I suppose, a better place in terms of sustainability to the world using MMC and using as offsite manufacturing where possible. So how are we doing it? We're doing it uh, primarily through uh, uh, multiple of things, starting with BIM. We start out with design intent from the engineers, and then we start to assist, I suppose, the whole supply chain. So what we see at the moment is the developer who will pass on to his architect the scope of works, so will get to his structural engineer to identify how they will actually construct and build the project, and then the cost manager does his evaluation. At this stage in the traditional world, the decisions are made for the future of how that activity would take place. What we're saying to the developing world and to the contractual world is that if we get engagement at this stage, early stage involvement, 
Uh, we can have an enormous benefit with modern methods of construction. We can always have enormous benefit in delivering 0% waste in the detail of the engineering and the way it's done, enabling us to give value to the developer, also be more competitive to our clients, the contractors, and then we fabricate as a user. Our early stage involvement improves the design criteria because of our concrete frame experience and our whole focus now and in the past has been to reduce carbon emissions from the manufacturer and use of faster fix as a product. I will show you the product in a moment. By utilizing the detailing practice that we have enabled through BIM, we are able to achieve 0% waste on all sites that we're involved in and that will reduce our carbon footprint. So faster fix as the solution uh, is as follows. We invented this product back in 2017 through the necessity of not being able to achieve labor on sites and have steel fixers effectively. It's the first world's off-site product in slab reinforcement and modular for modular reinforcement and reinforce in rebar. Uh, some photos here are uh, some of the units that we have assembled and we have assembled units from one ton to 28 tons, all using BIM and all using a special way that we detail the product to bring enormous speed and benefit to our clients. This video will demonstrate how the surface and product is delivered. If you watch the video very clearly, you'll see the trucks pulling in here on the left hand side. And from there, you will see the product being placed. So we have assembled the B1 layer first in units of mats, and then the B2, T2 and chair is all one unit coming as an automatic spliced, no loose bar system enabling the speed on construction on site to, to increase by up to 75%. The benefit of using the product also is that we are able to uh, bring our people to an offsite environment and we are able to deliver up to 15, 1600 square meters of reinforcement in a day. What you're looking at here is 93 tons of steel in bar diameter of 16 and 12, fixed in a day and a half, which would have taken eight days with eight or, eight or 10 people in the general traditional world. So from design intent to placement, we had a four day window here. The panels themselves can be detailed from a deep basement scenario, what you're seeing here, to a housing foundation. So what we have achieved in this instance with the client is a, a situation where we removed the two pore sequence that he had originally planned a four week window uh, for the actual placement of the rebar. And we came up with a solution of 58 lifts of the crane in five days and 600 tons of steel was placed. This was for us uh, an a world record and what we'd have achieved here, but it also brought enormous benefit to the client in terms of the way we detailed the process. So we actually detailed it to a point that we were removing the waste completely off the slab. Uh, and this was delivered with 0% waste. In day two, just to show you what you can achieve with good planning and uh, early, early stage involvement, again, we were given a task of a 1700 square meter, 18, uh, 1800 deep slab. This is a physical photo on October 21st, 2021. And as we can see clearly the arrangement for us to be delivering at that point in time in the morning wasn't ready. Uh, by 11 o'clock, we had removed all of the obstacles in our way and we'd started to deliver faster fix. As you can see in the photo, faster fix is an automatic splice system, just in time delivery. And by 5 p.m. that evening, this is the same site, same photo as we looked at at 7 a.m. in the morning. We had two thirds of the slab fixed. We were just pulling in with the last two trucks, placing the product in the bottom uh, left hand corner. And then the day after, at 2 p.m., we had 200 tons of steel fixed with four people. So by early stage involvement on this particular raft, once again, we were able to detail it to 0% waste. But on the delivery side, what was a three-week process in general with eight to 10 people became a day and a half process with four people. And on day four, they boarded. So it can be used for vertical elements. It can be used for horizontal elements. This is a retaining wall in a basement. Again, a four day process was removed and reduced back to five hours with six guys. And of that six hour, five hours, three of the hours were fixed 
the loose bar on the bottom of the wall. So just to show you the speed of the panel system and the module system. We're using it on various uh, industries, uh, modules for data centers. Again, you know, a full, this was a full half side of a data center and we placed that in, in, uh, in a day and a half uh, with 10 loads of steel. Had foundations, raft foundations, general foundations, all again, seven by seven, one and a half meter deep pads, delivered on modules, nine lifts for each pad, installed in an hour with a fixer or a bank spot. So what we're achieving with the process is way more efficiency with the just-in-time delivery, way more efficiency with craneage, uh, a lot of increased site safety and 100% traceability on the product. It is also for us a very, very good process because it's more sustainable in what we do. And as I said previously, our uh, sustainability objectives are to decrease the emissions, reduce the transport, uh, and we can do that, believe it or not, by doing the process and reduce the screw to scrap and what we're doing in our factories uh, to help us along that journey is we've developed the first robotic solution for the welding of the product bringing better quality to the system and changing the way we look at our job opportunities and business for the future so instead of trying to get uh, apprentice welders into the business we have now looked at trying to get and implement robotic technicians in our business that is enabling us to be more efficient in our processes. It's enabling us to be uh, of far better quality in our processes. And I suppose we're the first ones in the Western world to bring robotics to our industry and also develop the system for welding. So we are at the moment expanding on uh, another, I suppose, journey in terms of the delivery of housing. And we, are, uh, we have started the construction of a new facility in Port Leash, which will be the center of Ireland's facility for the delivery of the following products. We will deliver uh, Faster Fix as a solution for basements, residential, uh, and uh, any, any underground surfaces. Uh, we will be able to assist the precast industry by delivering pre-made cages for their facilities. We will be able to do a product called one-way material, one-way mesh for bar diameters of 12 mil up to 20 mil, and we will be able to have foundation ready mesh in packs modularized per house delivered to the sites that will remove uh, the waste on foundations in general, cages and pad foundations for industry. And all of that will be supported by our BIM process in which BIM level two will deliver the full detailing service from the engineering design intent directly to the site placement. This new catalog of products will be able to assist the industry in all of what I've just described and for sure bring down delivery times of the process of construction in concrete in situ by up to 75%. It also is, and we have proven it so far to date, that faster fix is 12.6% of a reduction in the CO2 emitted by doing the process uh, and by implementing it on, on our factories. This year, is uh, the largest facility that we have delivered in the process. It was a 24 month program uh, by using the offsite manufacturing facilities and process that we have from BIM right through to delivery, we removed six months on program in this project. So Faster Fix now in 2024 is all directed by the following chart. We implement BIM, we have smart factory principles, we deliver the process in faster fix, just in time deliveries, which makes craneage more efficient on sites and the delivery process, and it's far more sustainable. So what you're getting from it, I suppose, is your schedule guaranteed with just in time deliveries, increased site safety and on site steel storage is eliminated. That's uh, my presentation and thank you ever so much for listening.